Well, it's minus 33 degrees Celsius. With the wind chill, it's about minus 45 Celsius. We got a bit of snow, which is good. After at the cabin, using our firewood. Uh, it's too cold. Don't want to risk starting the tractor to uh, do any snow removal just yet. In a few days, it's supposed to warm up a little bit. So I'll wait till then. The boiler is humming away, no problems. So I did a cold start. When I first fired it on, that uh, water temperature was 16 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, took about an hour and a half for it to actually come up to temperature of solid burning. And of course, it's probably gonna start a burn cycle in one degree here. Uh, of course, the air damper down here was a little stuck. So a few little taps and a little bit of heat, nothing starts moving just fine and dandy. Cracker open here, see if we can actually see anything. Just a lot of smoke at this point. You can see I've got a, we can get you in there enough. I've got a good load of wood in there. So even at these temperatures, I fill that firebox up to the top and that'll give me a 12 hour burn, even in these temperatures. Uh, works perfect, no problem at all. So just thought I'd update folks a little bit really cold weather this thing just shines it is absolutely toasty warm up in the cabin um, to the point where you know we're wearing t-shirts and taking our socks off because it's so warm in there gotta love it um, it's all in slab heating from the boiler so it's really nice and warm on the feet uh, even up in the bedroom we ran pack packs underneath the floors so you, know, you get up out of bed in the morning and she's uh, she's warm to the feet which I love so anyway not gonna be doing much snowmobiling at this temperature maybe when it warms up later in the week I might uh, might take you folks for a ride but just wanted to give an update on the boiler and the wood everything's going really good there uh, the boiler actually likes it more when it's cold like this than when it's really warm out. Um, much easier to keep the coal bed going and everything. Uh, oh yeah, you can see a little bit of a little bit of white coming out of the stack there. So she's starting up a, a firing. So yeah, and uh, you know maybe I'll take you up and I'll show you what the boiler system looks inside the cabin. Of course it's so cold this old Betsy won't start this morning so not sure what we're gonna do about that yet because it is plugged in. Uh, I think the starter I think the starter itself doesn't like the cold so she won't crank. That's another story. Anyway I'll bring you inside do you a quick tour of the boiler system itself. So here's my boiler setup. Maybe what I'll do is I'll show you how it works starting from coming from the outdoor wood boiler. So it comes from down there, I come up here. And so when I'm not here and I'm just heating off the electric boiler, I go ahead and I isolate so that the water keeps flowing just barely into here and then flows right back to the boiler. Uh, the manufacturer suggested making sure you're always circulating in there even when it's cold so that uh, the glycol doesn't separate and stuff like that. So that's what I do, hit the isolation valves, just let it circulate by itself cold. Um, so these lines come along into a plate heat exchanger and that heats the main loop up before it goes through the electric boiler here and then comes out and the rest is just pretty standard boiler system. So this circulates the main loop. This is a hot loop that does upstairs zones. 
So that gets the full temperature uh, of the boiler up to 180 degrees kind of thing. And then we come down, got a separator. And then we come here, there's a mixing valve and it mixes it down cooler. So it mixes it down to 120 degrees Fahrenheit before it then goes into all my zones for all of the slab. Um, of course, I went and went fully automated here. So I've actually got uh, one, two, three, four thermostats in this little place. So one for the master bedroom upstairs, one for the bathroom upstairs, one for the main open area of the cabin, and one that controls the two guest rooms. Um, so it's a little bit overkill on the control system, but that's, uh, that's the way I want it to roll. So other things worth note here is of course I've got my pressure tank here and it keeps the water slash glycol mixture at, uh, at a certain level. Make sure that I have a, the right pressure that I need here. Uh, all these little wires, etc., are just a little piece of electronics that I made that uh, looks at the temperature at various places in the loop and feeds all that to my home automation system. Uh, yeah, so that's it. You know, from a outdoor wood boiler perspective, this works absolutely perfect. So when I cold start the boiler, this is actually more in this configuration here, right? So the water comes up and just goes right back to the boiler. So when I cold start the boiler, I don't switch this to go through the heat exchanger until the outside wood boiler is up to temperature. Because uh, then that way, I'm not going to thermal shock anything with the, uh, the heat exchanger over here. Uh, I'm not heating domestic hot water here uh, at this point. Once we actually move out here permanently, I might adjust the system and, and do domestic hot water. But we use so little here at the moment that uh, we just run a little on-demand electric. So. so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Any questions, just uh, pop it in the comments, let me know. And on that note, I'll sign out. That's the update on heating in Saskatchewan at minus 33 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, she's cold out there, but I'm nice and toasty warm in here. All right, everybody. Talk to you later.